Hello, everyone. Um, I am Xin Lin from University of Utah. And uh, I will going to talk about uh, the project on migratory compression. And this is a joint work with uh, several people from EMC. Uh, so in this project, uh, we worked on improving compression. And traditional compressors works by finding redundant information within a certain distance. And uh, the distance is uh, usually also called uh, the window size. Uh, the problem with uh, traditional compressors uh, is that uh, they use very small uh, window sizes. And that uh, similarities across a large range will not be identified. Uh, so we propose a migratory compression. Uh, it is a cost-grained uh, data reorganization to group similar blocks together to improve compressibility. Um, this can be used as a generic preprocessing stages for any standard compressors. And we also found that uh, in many cases, uh, it improves both compressibility and the throughput. And when using this technique for archival storage, uh, we found that uh, this is effective to improve compressibility and reduce its cost. So here is the background. Uh, in this work, uh, compression factor means uh, uh, the ratio between the original size and divided by the complex size. And the throughput is the uh, original size divided by compressed time. And the table here shows uh, uh, three common compressors uh, we looked into. Uh, they are GZIP, BZIP2, and 7Z. Uh, in the table, we also present the maximum window size uh, each compressor supports. Uh, what we can see from this table is uh, uh, the maximum window size is only one gigabyte from 7Z. And that uh, if similar blocks are separated further away more than um, um, many gigabytes or terabytes, uh, these compressors will not be able to find. And if we run these three compressors, we will get this uh, throughput versus compression factor curve. Uh, GZIP is using a rather small window. Uh, it doesn't compress well, but runs really fast. And the 7Z is uh, another extreme that uses a much larger window. But, uh, it compresses really well, uh, but it is the slowest. So what we can get from this figure is, uh, in general, the larger the window, the better the compression, but also uh, slower. ASIP is another compressor we consider. Uh, ASIP is different from the previous three compressors uh, in the sense that uh, it first does an intro file deduplication, and then it uses BZIP2 to compress the remainder. Uh, because it is doing deduplication, and the deduplication effectively reduces the actual data that will uh, be compressed by the compressor, uh, it achieves a comparable compression factor as 7Z, uh, but it is faster than 7Z. There are mainly two motivations for this work. Uh, the first is to compress a single large file. Uh, we know that uh, traditional compressors are not be able to uh, explore the similarities set across a large range, uh, such as many gigabytes. So giving an example, um, for this input file, uh, we mark the similar blocks in the same color. GZIP is using a rather small window and that uh, it may not even be able to explore the similarity between A and A prime. Uh, 7Z is using a much larger window. Uh, however, uh, it may still not be able to explore the similarity between A and A double prime. Then if we use the standard compressors to compress this input file, uh, we might get something as shown on the left bottom. Block A double prime and B prime are not compressed well because uh, they are further away at the end of this file. Uh, what we propose for this case is uh, called the MZIP. So for MZIP, the input file will first be transferred such that similar blocks are next to each other. And then we use standard compressors to compress it. And it will compress better because non-similar blocks are next to each other. Uh, the second motivation for this work is to improve compression for long-term retention. Uh, so the other case we consider is uh, data migration from the backup tier to archive tier for data application storage systems. The so observation we made is that uh, in the backup tiers, similar blocks could be scattered across different compression regions. So I show such an example here. Uh, a compression region here means uh, the unit of data that is compressed together. So in the example, I show that uh, block A and A prime are actually compressed in two different compression regions. 
So the current practice to do data migration from uh, uh, backup tier to the archive tier is simply copying compilations from uh, these two tiers. And we might get something like this. Uh, what we propose is during this data migration, we could, we could uh, actually do more work to identify similar blocks and then compress similar blocks into the same compressed region and thus improve compressibility and reduce the disk uh, space consumption for the archive tier. Okay, so uh, to recap, we propose uh, migratory compression. Uh, the idea is to improve compressibility by grouping similar blocks. We mainly consider two user cases, MZIP, compress a single large file, and the data migration for archive storage. There are a few other considerations, uh, such as uh, how to identify uh, similar blocks or how to reorganize the, uh, the data blocks efficiently. Um, but before I dive into such details, uh, I would like to introduce the high-level workflow for MZIP, uh, which is uh, complex a single large file. So in MZIP, given the input file, we will use a segmentation tool to partition it into blocks, and then we calculate the similarity features for each block. And I will talk about uh, similarity features in a few slides. Then we use uh, uh, the similarity detector to identify duplicate and uh, similar blocks. Um, it will output the two recipes, the migrate recipe and the restore recipe. And then we use the reorganizer to generate the reorganized file. Uh, please note that uh, in, at the beginning of the reorganized file, we store the restore recipe. And uh, we use standard compressors to compress the reorganized file. Uh, note that uh, the reorganized file could uh, exist only as a pipe between the reorganizer and the compressor. And uh, during decompression, uh, the reorganized file will first uh, decompress, and uh, we extract uh, the restore recipes, and uh, the re uh, restore will uh, recreate the input file, the original file. So here is a concrete example. Uh, given the input file, we will partition it into blocks, and the similarity features for each block will be calculated. Then we use a similarity detector to uh, detect the duplicate and the similar blocks. And it will output the two recipes. So in this example, uh, the migrate recipe tells us that we need to put A prime to be next to A and B prime to be next to B. And the reorganizer will generate the reorganized file and it will be compressed. And during decompression, uh, the reorganized file will be decompressed and we uh, uh, the, we recreate the original file based on the restore recipe. Uh, for detecting similar blocks, uh, we use a mutual technique called the uh, similarity feature. Uh, it was uh, invented by Brother more than 10 years ago. So we use a strong hash to detect a duplicate block. And we use a few uh, weak hashes, which are also called the features, uh, to provide hints about the similarity among blocks. Uh, two blocks are similar if they share some of the features. And this is a, a mutual technique which had been uh, applied in a few other projects, uh, such as uh, redundant el uh, elimination at the block level and uh, one optimized uh, uh, replication. So for data reorganization, uh, what it does is to rearrange the input file based on the uh, recipe. Uh, this is what the reorganizer and the restore uh, will do. So one intuitive approach to do data reorganization is simply to, uh, for, for every block required by the recipe, uh, you go to that uh, uh, location and you fetch that block. And uh, the animation shows such an example. Uh, so from, the, uh, from this example, we can see that uh, this approach involves many learning IOs. Um, if we can fit the input file in memory, or if we have an SSD, uh, to store the input file, then this approach uh, works fine. Uh, however, uh, if we uh, don't have an SSD or the file is too large and the file is too large to fit in memory, uh, then this will become problematic. So for such cases, uh, we uh, propose an, opti uh, an optimization uh, called the multipass approach. Uh, so assume we have a memory buffer of three data blocks uh, we scan the input file multiple times, and uh, for the first scan, uh, we, we scan it and then get the first three blocks. And it continues. Uh, for the next scan, 
uh, it will get us the next uh, three uh, blocks, and uh, this process continues until we get all the data blocks. Uh, so what uh, this approach, uh, approach effectively does is to convert random IOs into several sequential scans. And our evaluation shows that uh, it does improve uh, throughput. So for evaluation, uh, for MZIP, I will first talk about uh, how much compression we can improve with the migratory compression. Uh, then uh, I will show what, what the complexity is. Uh, for complexity, I mainly mean the uh, runtime overhead. Uh, so to measure the uh, complexity, we store the input and output in memory uh, to avoid any disk I.O. Then we looked into uh, what will happen if we store the input file in an SSD or HDD. And for the uh, hard disk drive, uh, how, much, uh, how much improve we can get from the multi-pass approach. And uh, in the paper, we did a few more uh, evaluations, uh, such as comparing megalithic compression uh, with data compression. Uh, we also explored the configuration options uh, to do megalithic compression. Uh, please love to our paper for more de details. And at last, I will present uh, the result for data migration uh, for archivity. So to evaluate uh, MZIP, uh, we use a few data sets. Uh, there are three types, two of them are backups, and one is a virtual machine uh, disk image. And for each data type, I only present uh, one data set. Uh, please refer to our paper for uh, others. And in the table, I present uh, the file size, uh, the duplication factor, and the compression factors for uh, standard compressors. And these compression factors will be used as the baseline for comparison. So one thing to note is that uh, uh, data application factors for exchange email backups are very low. Uh, now let's have a look at uh, what we can get when we uh, add a migratory compression to uh, standard compressors. Uh, so the figure here shows uh, results for workstation one data set. Uh, the uh, horizontal direction shows the compression factor, the vertical direction shows throughput. So if we run standard gzip, we get about 20 megabytes per second um, and uh, 2x compression factor. Then if we add a megalithic compression to gzip, both compression factors and throughput are improved. And the same applies for the other three compressors. Uh, there are mainly two sources for this improvement. Uh, first is uh, we are doing data application. And the data application effectively reduces the actual data that the compressor needed to compress and decompress. And uh, it improves the throughput and the compression factor. Uh, we also found out that uh, data reorganization also helps to improve compression factor and the throughput. Uh, so this figure shows us the same results, but for Exchange 2 data set. Uh, we note that uh, compression factors are improved, uh, but there's a slight drop in throughput. Uh, the main uh, difference between this data set and the previous one is that uh, Exchange email backups have very low deduplication factor. And that's the uh, deduplication doesn't uh, help much for improving compression. Uh, then the overhead to, uh, do, to do a migratory compression become evident. Uh, we know that uh, compressors can be run at a various compression level and with different uh, window sizes, basically to make a trade-off between uh, runtime and uh, compressibility. So uh, on this slide, we are trying to answer the question uh, whether we can get the same benefits uh, as microlithic compression by simply running the compressors uh, at its maximum uh, configuration. So the figure here shows the results for uh, workstation one. So if we run 7Z with the default parameters, we get about three megabytes per second throughput and the four X compression factor. And if we run 7Z with its maximum parameters, um, the compression factor is improved to be 6x, uh, but it runs slow. Then, if we run uh, 7Z with microlithic compression with default uh, parameters, both compression factors and the throughput are improved. And the same applies for uh, the cases when we add a microlithic compression for 7Z with maximum uh, parameters. Uh, results for other compressors have the same trend. Uh, from this figure, we know that uh, migratory compression uh, does uh, benefit uh, compressors that are running with its maximum uh, parameters. 
Uh, now let's have a look at the compilation uh, factor breakdown from each of these techniques. Uh, so we, uh, in micro compilations, we first uh, uh, does deduplication, and it uh, usually gives 1x to 2x uh, compilation factor. And uh, the blue bars shows the additional compilation factors we can get by doing gzip after doing deduplication. Uh, so the uh, gzip makes another con uh, con uh, significant contribution. Then the uh, brown bars shows the additional compression, uh, compression factors we can get by doing uh, data reorganization. Uh, we found that uh, the contribution are actually quite uh, significant, and it varies depending on data sets. And now let's have a look at uh, what uh, throughput we can get when we actually have a disk I/O involved. Uh, so for uh, for this case, uh, we mainly consider three configurations. Uh, the first is uh, the memory case. So uh, for the memory case, we store both input and output in a temporary office, and uh, there is no disk I/O involved. Then for the SSD case and the HDD case, uh, we store the input file either in the SSD or HDD, and we store the output file at an HDD. And we artificially limited the memory size to be eight gigabyte. And the Memory keys always give us the highest uh, throughput because there is no disk I/O involved. Then, uh, if we use uh, SSD to store the input file, uh, it gives a reasonably good performance. Then, if we use a hard disk drive to store the input file, uh, we find that the, that the intuitive block approach uh, gives a much worse performance. And with the multi-pass approach, uh, it does improve the throughput. Uh, one thing to note is uh, uh, for the Ubuntu, 2, it is a special case uh, in that it is, uh, the file size is only seven gigabyte, and uh, we are using a, a eight gigabyte memory. And for the uh, multi-pass approach, we uh, use a 4.8 gigabyte window, and it uh, needs two scans. Uh, it looks like the PG cache is doing a better job uh, in this case. Uh, from what we can learn from this is that uh, uh, for data reorganization, uh, uh, SSD gives a reasonably good performance, and uh, for the multi uh, for the HDD case, uh, we can use the multi-pass approach to improve throughputs. Now let's have a look at uh, uh, data migration for archive storage. So we uh, use data domain file system. Uh, data domain file system uses uh, uh, LZ to compress in the backup tier uh, because it uh, runs faster. Uh, for the archive tier, it uh, uses uh, GZ to compress. So when we migrate data from the backup tier to the archive tier, it first uncompress LZ and then recompress with GZ to get a better compression. So we, uh, when we add a migratory compression to data migration process, uh, we will try to identify uh, similar blocks and then compress them into the same compression uh, region. Uh, in order to see the different compression factors we get for uh, different cluster size of similar blocks, uh, so we sort the similar blocks by the uh, cluster size. And then we migrate in three stages, and uh, during the first stage, uh, we migrate the uh, top third or largest, uh, largest clusters, and uh, then the middle third. And uh, the bottom third includes uh, some uh, distinct blocks. And we use four data sets. Uh, one of them is workstations, uh, which contain many backups of uh, several workstations. And we also use uh, three other uh, exchange email Backups. Uh, so the black bar here shows uh, um, the baseline compilation factor we can gather uh, from gzip. And uh, the green bar shows the compilation factor so we get when we add a migratory compression to, uh, to the uh, baseline. Uh, we can see the improvement are quite uh, significant. And the yellow and the red bars shows the compilation factors for the uh, top and the middle sort. And uh, the blue bar shows for uh, compression factor for the uh, bottom third. Uh, so the lessons we learned from this is uh, migratory compression does improve for, uh, compression factor for uh, um, data migration for archive storage. Uh, the improvement uh, ranges from 44% to more than 150 uh, for workstations. And the top two thirds compress really well. Uh, because uh, migratory compression improves compressibility uh, for archival storage, uh, it reduces the uh, disk uh, space consumptions and saves money. 
Uh, there are some overhead associated with uh, doing uh, migratory compression uh, for, um, for uh, data migration. Uh, we, we, we found that the runtime for migrating Exchange one data set uh, is almost three times longer. Uh, this is because of the um, additional competition and I will involved. And then uh, the read performance also becomes worse. Uh, so that is because now the data is more fragmented uh, across the file system. Uh, so to read back the entire Exchange one data set, uh, now it takes uh, 1.3 times uh, longer. And uh, uh, it takes uh, seven times longer to read back the final backup. Uh, however, uh, if we only reorgan reorganize the top third, then the increase in runtime is only um, 24%. Um, this is bad, but uh, uh, it seems to be fine for the archival storage. And there are also some uh, uh, memory overhead involved as well. Uh, there are a few related works. Um, some looks into improved traditional compressors, uh, such as uh, by using a large window, doing the duplication, and uh, sorting characters within a single block. Data compilation is another uh, similar technique in that uh, it also try to uh, find uh, similar blocks. Uh, we did a compression well, with, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we did a compression between migratory compression and uh, data compression. Uh, we found that uh, migratory compression is slightly better. Uh, data compression is also more complex to implement in uh, file systems. Uh, because of the complexity involved in uh, bookkeeping. There are also a few workers that use the same technique to detect uh, similar blocks, uh, such as uh, one optimized uh, replication and uh, redundant elimination at the block level. Okay, uh, to conclude, uh, we propose the migratory compression. Uh, it is a generic preprocessing uh, stage that can improve for compressibility by uh, grouping similar blocks. Uh, when using this to compress a single large file, uh, we found that it improves existing compressors uh, in both compressibility and the frequently runtime. Uh, it redraws the performance versus compression curve. <laughs> and when uh, using this for, uh, technique for archive storage, it reduces dollars per gigabyte uh, even further. Um, thank you very much. Uh, with that, I would like to take questions. Questions, uh, Cornel Constantinescu from uh, IBM Almaden Research. I have two questions. <laughs> um, so first, um, I, uh, from what you showed, um, you rearrange the blocks. Yes. And then to uncompress, you have to uncompress uh, all the stuff and then rearrange the block again, no? Uh, so yes, in, during decompression, we need to restore the... You need to uncompress all the compressed stuff. No, you cannot uncompress few blocks and then try to reconstruct, or if you want random access somehow. Uh, I probably don't quite understand your question. So to decompress the file. Um, uh, during decompression, uh, sometimes it also runs faster because... Uh, uh, we are doing data application, so you... I, I understand, I understand. Okay, okay. But, but you have to reconstruct all the blocks in raw format, not in compressed form. Uh, yes. So your method has two levels. No, one is uh, rearranging the block and one compressing. So to reconstruct, you have to uncompress and then reshuffle the block in the original form. Oh. I think uh, uh, for the MZIP case, uh, we uh, uncompress the whole file, and then we... Okay, do, that you know, was the question. So yeah. I saw that you have some kind of uh, uh, no. partial uncompression, because a gigabyte to uncompress takes about uh, half a minute or more. So, um, and the second, I saw a similar or somewhat similar co uh, compression method with... Um, um, I seen that by Bentley and McIlroy that was used the, uh, in, uh, in big table in Google. Uh, I don't know if you compare it somewhat. Uh, we are not aware of that work, probably. Maybe you can. Yeah, so the name is. Uh, yeah. yeah, the name is. Uh, uh, yeah. You're welcome to point it first. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, Ethan Miller, UC Santa Cruz. First of all, it's very interesting work. I, I kind of like the idea. One thing I'm wondering about, though, is if you're doing this on very large streams for archiving and you rearrange the blocks sufficiently so you put all the similar ones together, yeah. if you squeeze all the redundancy out, how does that impact reliability? Uh, if you do it the naive way and you've got A and A prime on diff striped across different devices, if A goes, you get A prime back. Now you put all of them together, and if that one block goes away, you end up losing all your data you don't, you know, because you put everything together. Is that... Have you, have you thought about that or how to deal with that yet? Uh, I don't think we thought about that, yeah. Okay, uh, it's, it's, just, it's a concern mostly for the archival stuff because you squeeze all the redundancy out and then you gotta make sure you add it back in again, that's all. Uh, yeah, I think it's a trade-off of them. Um, like, uh, if, if you want to put two similar uh, blocks uh, further away to, to improve the reliability, then you, you go that way. And if you want to better compression, you go this way. Okay, all right, great, yeah. thanks. Hi, Jay Lorch, Microsoft Research. This is a really cool idea and uh, great, great work. Um, so it seems that uh, all of your experiments and all of your uh, work so far, you've kept the compressor the same. You haven't modified it. Have, are you starting to look at uh, modifying the compressor itself to make it reorganization aware so it can do reorganization in place? Or, no, or I think uh, uh, one reason that we don't modify the compressors itself is that uh, uh, this can be used as a generic preprocessing um, stage that can benefit all the compressors. And if there are improvements uh, in compressors, uh, they can get the same benefits by just uh, doing this uh, as a separate uh, preprocessing stage. 